So this, <laughs> this is what a lot of you were asking me to react to. <laughs> this is what a lot of you were asking me to react to is the, uh, the guild season changes. Um, they're coming up in the update talking about the might, how the season point gain and everything has changes and, and basically how it breaks open how you as a guild and individuals um, can earn season points without just having to cram yourself into like 5v5 crystals and stuff. And really like the 5v5 crystals have been a very restricting, um, I feel kind of, um, you know, means of gaining season points, the mage rating, mage rating everything. So I like how much this is opening it up, but we'll, we'll play the video and we'll, we'll go over it. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to another Albion Online Dev Talk. Hello. In this video, I want to talk about the massive changes and new features coming to Guild Seasons in Albion Online with the Lands Awakened update in late November. With these changes, we want to allow players to earn season points for their guild by participating in small scale activities. And we want them to earn rewards for doing so. That's that's just really a big one, like right off rip, just giving people a chance to earn like season points just for doing small scale activities, right? Not not waiting in a hideout for a CTA to go out and do shit or sat there in town waiting for a crystal timer to pop, like actual small scale shit that we can go and do. It's huge, honestly. We also want to shift the focus of how to win guild seasons away from passive territory control and more towards player activity. To explain how we achieve these goals, let's get started by looking at the all new Conqueror's Challenge. Okay. The Conqueror's Challenge replaces the existing guild season reward system with a new type of challenge, which runs for the duration of a guild season and is available to all premium players. So this was one thing that I actually suggested to them directly. Um, and have pushed for quite a while as well is that we have individual progress to make as well when we're going through these things that we can track and everything um to, to not not have this invisible like you're in a season you're doing this shit you have no real understanding of what's happening and what's going on you just wait there you sit idling in a guild and at the end you get a, a season mount and it's like okay great you know like it's it's kind of it's kind of shit right the current system we have for it so actually going through and giving these weekly rewards and everything else for individually for players participating and then as a group and as a guild it's it's huge honestly i mean see here we've got activity gains giving you these uh stats from 10v10s 2v2 5v5 corrupted dungeons of both stalker and slayer level crystal league is on there crystal spiders fishing fishing in the Rose of Avalon and uh, the Outlands, gathering in the Rose of Avalon and the Outlands, guild season bracket level up. So that's like a, a, a boost you get when you hit a certain point, you get like a boost in, in these points, right? Um, getting hideout power cores back to your hideout, opening up Outlands treasures, which are the, the random spawn ones, as you saw in the last video, that spawn kind of sporadically around the map and have different times to open based on how valuable they are. Um, PVE in the Outlands and again in the Roads of Avalon. So just doing PVE now, you're not wasting your time. You're earning, you know, these uh, these might points for your guild to work on your season points, right? Siphoning Mages rating as well here in energy, uh, Territory Energy Crystals too. All, all of this stuff, like really huge, honestly. Um, really happy with uh, them diversifying the gain of season points because before, what did we have? We had Spiders, Crystal Lee, uh, and then siphoning mages and stuff, right? Um, and 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 leveling the territories up. It's just it's just really big change, and I and rewards active play, which is the really important thing for me. You know, it doesn't mean that like like uh, and 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 makes even guilds like Arch and stuff able to compete more in the season stuff just by having a lot of members actively playing the game and doing stuff, which is going to be interesting to see how that plays into the game too. Um, but I'm really happy about this honestly because it means it's like a small active guild trying to pursue the highest point gains of season points. You don't just have to compete in 5v5 crystals and, and 20v20 crystals because they've been hard, right? They've been hard. They've been very meta games like to the, the most efficient metas um, by the guilds that are constantly doing them and they're not that accessible. But this this massively increases accessibility to the season as a whole. So I'm super happy with it. Super happy with it. It was disconnected? 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah it looks super promising. Mm -hmm. Whether okay. they are in a guild or not. By earning a new type of points called Might, players can earn progress towards the challenge goal, which unlocks powerful and unique rewards, 
including new seasonal collectible avatars on multiple progression levels, as well as the well-known season battle mounts and fame boosts. To earn might, players can participate in a large variety of activities, which all Okay, so this, I like, again, giving people actual, like, UI so they can tell how to do this without having to watch a video or check patch notes. In the game, you can see how you gain might and favor, you know? Which is huge. Like, they're, they're just, like, more explanations, more, you know, like, more uh, in-depth guides in the game to tell people how to do this stuff is fantastic. All come with the risk of PvP. These include killing mobs and gathering in the Outlands or Roads of Avalon, opening treasure chests, killing siphoning mages or crystal spiders, as well as playing Hellgates, Crystal League, or winning corrupted dungeon matches. One one hope I do. One thing I like is that they included gathering. Uh, one thing that I love is that they included gathering into the into the mix. So like as a gatherer, you feel like you you know you don't have to show up to CTAs. You don't have to do all this other stuff. As a gatherer, you feel like you're valuable for your guild by just getting a constant source of of this might and favor. You know, and then um. A big one as well. I I hope because I I, I do enjoy doing uh, Hellgates as well. Um, I'm hoping that with them adding five v five, two v two, and ten v ten, especially the five v five and ten v ten Hellgates to the list, I hope we see a lot more activity in those areas. Not just the teams that are going in when they know other teams are running and then they kind of fight to see if it's active, but actually multiple people are varying skill levels in there to try and compete to gain those points. Right, which leads to a much better thing because right now basically nobody's um. Right now, nobody's uh, actually really in 10v10s, for example, unless they know other people are in 10v10s, right? But with this, you might actually get teams in there and trying to kind of farm these up and stuff, which is fantastic. Um, giving you a breakdown of how you are contributing is cool because it gives you something to work towards. Exactly. Yeah, it's way better. It's way better. Um, being able to track your personal progress against your guild members and stuff to see, you know, what you can be doing to improve. Say, so if someone else has got like a lot, like how are you getting those points? Like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I've been gathering uh, aspects and shit, you know, and doing 10 v Um What are your thoughts on Guardian spawn changes, like old white? I haven't seen any changes on that plasmatic. If you want to hit me with where they are, I can, I can, I can go over that. He has no boot ability selected in the video. You are correct. This man is doing a corrupted dungeon without shoes. <laughs> Bit of a mistake. Didn't even know this 10v10 Hellgates. Exactly, exactly. Like, hopefully this, this helps bring awareness to this stuff. Might can also be earned for capturing one of the new territory energy crystals. This mechanic's so cool. Which we'll talk about later in this video. When a player earns might, in most cases, they will also earn favor. Favor is a spendable currency which players can use to purchase <laughs> siphoned energy as well as additional reward chests allowing them to gain a direct economic benefit from earning might as well. And again, this was one of the big things, giving people individual progressing like rewards for participating in the season stuff, right? So you, just, so you can contribute and you can go through and you can actually, with your own progress, get something out of it, right? Other than just kind of, I mean, what we, we've had some issues in Albion in the past with these big alliance RMT scandals and all this shit, right? Where people have been like batteries from the Matrix to feed some guy's ability to buy a yacht IRL, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm obviously going a little overboard with that, but you know what I mean. Like this rewards players for their own efforts in the game to play. Like yeah, huge motivation. Like and, and again, just connecting you with the gameplay on another level, right? Which is super important. As players earn might and favor for themselves, they will contribute to another new feature: the guild might levels. Each guild now earns season points for each might level they complete. And all players in the guild can contribute to these together. So this, again, another super cool thing is you have these levels that you hit through, goals to hit. If you hit the goal, then you get a bonus um, of the season points for rewards, right? So PvE, Outlands, and Rose. You go ahead and you do that stuff, right? You hit that cap, boom, you hit, you hit this, uh, this kind of goal to hit through. So you have like goals to hit as a guild, which I really like. Because that's something that helps pull guilds together into these collective goals, uh, uh, collective uh, kind of like gameplay. It's just really nice to like have you like objectives. Albion's a sandbox game, and I think one of the problems with with a sandbox game or a game that's as sandbox as Albion is a lot of the gameplay that you do is very reliant on yourself, right? It's on your own imagination, and unfortunately, a lot of players we have in Albion uh, suffer a critical, you know, lack of imagination. So. All they'll do is roam around 20-man gang squads because that's, that's all they know how to do. I, I can get something from this. I can get gameplay from this. That's all I can do, right? Uh, well, players will just go around and gather. Players will just try and do 2v2 Hellgates or 10v10s and they'll sit there and go, what else do I do in the game? What's the point, right? Like giving yourself reasonable, achievable goals to hit um, 
just just really cool, honestly. Um, I don't know how 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 hard these are going to be to achieve. What the values are actually uh, kind of written out from here. Um, but I'd, I'd say a lot of this stuff super achievable. Um, and and really interesting as well to actually get you to to apply yourself to the different goals and to direct your guild to be like, hey, you know, you have your guys that are going to be running Rose of Avalon. You have your guys that are going to be doing siphoning mages and stuff, and just have people contributing to separate goals and how guilds break down their efforts and these things are super cool. I think you know. You'll have you'll have reason to have people in the guilds that are just going to be doing two v two hellgates. It makes guilds and gameplay much more diverse as well because you don't just have everybody stacking up for CTAs and the only people you want are going to be showing to CTAs and then logging off, right? Like it it really rewards you from having a diverse kind of list of players under your control as well as a guild, which is super cool. It's a bummer the roads aren't getting open world mobs out and roads will have a separate pass, guys. Roads will have a separate pass. Roads of Avalon will have a separate pass, honestly. This is huge just for content in general. So many people will be doing so, so much more. I, I think what SBI are trying to do, who I say I think, I know what SBI are trying to do here is just work on spreading players out, right? And the only way you can do that is to give them reason to be spread out in the first place. And by giving them different goals, rather than everything is everyone's piling into crystals. Everyone's doing territory raging. You know, everyone's doing the CTA shit. Giving this means that you, you give a reason for people to spread around the world, right? Unless you have a reason for people to do it, people won't, you can't just create an environment within the sandbox and be like, oh, look at this really cool place. You can spread out here. You can do all this separate thing. Unless you give people reasonable goals to actually like be able to um, you know go and achieve in these different areas, then they're just going to zerg out every kind of content they can do. So this is a super important thing to get people split up, honestly. Time for mandatory might point quotas. I mean, you monka s that, right? But some guilds might take it really seriously and and actually have people making sure they hit their quotas in various areas too, which is which is interesting, right? I really hope this changes uh, help guilds from only ZVZ to more diverse content. Try joining a good guild is half is hard if you're not into ZVZ. Exactly, exactly, exactly. There are individual levels for different activities, giving players a wide range of options to contribute season points while earning might in favor for themselves. Players will also directly benefit from their guild's season success. As soon as their guild reaches a new season bracket, players will be rewarded with a significant amount of might, moving them closer to unlocking their season rewards. In addition, Reaching a new bracket also unlocks a bonus to any might generated for the rest of the season. So again, another big one there. You Not only do you have your own individual goal, goals to work to and be rewarded to, but because you all get rewarded individually when your guild hits those brackets, it gives you a reason to want to work together to hit those brackets as well, right? So it does a great job of separating like your individual efforts and your group efforts and, and bring everything together. Um, and I do like as well, that kind of escalating reward system where the more you earn when you hit those brackets, um, the more points you earn later on. And what that does mean, which is very important from a gameplay design point of view, um, is that you you want to go super hard when the season starts because you want to try and escalate your season bracket. You know, like you want to get your season brackets higher and higher so you get rewarded more and more as time goes on. But then it also maintains player activity because you're then at those higher brackets, you're earning more. You want to try and keep that advantage, especially if you've, you've got up quicker um so so you know as you get closer to the end of the season where typically you know in other systems people die off right now they have the system where you get extra point gain at the end of the season now they're doing this escalating system um so you don't have people just burning out and, and just going super high and then being like okay well we've, we've, we've got a good lead that's it right because you have this escalating system you'll have to remain competitive all the way through the season at the beginning to get the, uh, the kind of escalation ramped up and then at the end because you have that big point gain right and you want to keep that going too so really, really clever way of doing that. And I'm very, very happy with that, honestly. I can get those points the way I like, not just running around the map waiting for a fight to come. Exactly. It's great, honestly. While adding these features, we've also added a season overview, which allows players to see the guild's current ranking, where its season's points came from. You know, uh, Marge, you're, you're slacking there but blue bunny's gone hard jesus jesus and which players contributed the most might I, I like this too being able to track who's like really contributing and who's not so much and, and being able to tell in each individual area so you can see hey this guy's not done too much in this area but it's fucking killing it in like you know this area from like gathering or something so great way to keep track as well if you're a guild leader if you're in the slave guilds trying to quota your your members right 
you missed your quota. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. As a final part of today's video, I want to talk about the changes coming to territories. In this will without a doubt be the most critical update in recent history. It's huge. It is huge. It does so much for the game, honestly. Carlos, we're looking at you. Carlos. Including the all new energy vortices. These are crazy. Energy vortices, like, like the recently introduced open world treasures, spawn at random times in unpredictable places in the Outlands. An energy vortex is a mighty storm of magical energy which moves across the landscape. It's so cool. It is marked on the world and local map for everyone within a few regions of the storm. Eventually, after a time dependent on its strength, the storm dissipates. So as important as well, you saw at the start of the video, they were all like kicking it and attacking it. You can't do shit. These vortex will just knock you back and mess you up, right? Only after a specific period of time or, you know, an indeterminate amount of time they have there, um, will the storm clear that you can then access the power crystal. So that's going to really drag players together to fight over this stuff. Leaving behind a powerful territory energy crystal. This crystal can be picked up by a player on foot and carried to a friendly territory. If players can safely get the crystal to a territory without having it stolen, they can capture it at the territory tower. What's going to be super interesting with this is seeing what metas guilds come up with to transport these, right? Because like this is going to be stuff that will be ZVZ'd over. And what I like about it is it's not just CTA times, right? Breaking shit up away from the CTA stuff, right? Um... <laughs> Give no mad's getting so good. It's getting past that noise in chat. Um, about <laughs> shit. Now you caught me in it. Um, rather than just having CTA shit, where everyone sat in a hideout and stuff, waiting for a specific timer to come out in force, and then you have this zone capping shit and everything else. You just have active, sporadic, just sort of dynamically appearing objectives through the open world, and people be oh shit, there's a uh, you know, uh, there's a power core in Dark Root Hollow. So then people are gonna go over to there because it's the vortex, then whilst that vortex is still going, you're going to be having open world fighting around it, right? Because people are going to want to try and secure that content. Um, and then after it's spawned, then you have to pick it up and you have to walk this shit, right? So I, it's going to be crazy good to see like what people are bringing. I'm imagining like occult staffs, you know, for people to try and run them through the zone quicker. Um, you know, maybe maybe Trinity Spears and stuff with like royal jackets and everything to just run that that user out and they're going to have to have these ZBZ forces to protect them and stuff. Like what's the person transporting it going to wear? You know, are they going to be on a double bladed staff so they have like faster mobility themselves as well? Or are they going to wear something super tanky like maybe a one handed mate with, a, with an Avalonian shield, right? To really tank themselves up and make sure that they don't do not go down carrying this crystal and can just keep walking their path. I really, really cool stuff. Once captured, the crystal boosts the energy of the territory, increasing its level and improving the rate at which it generates siphon energy and season points, as well as boosting the strength of guards, the spawn rate of enchanted resources and gathering yield in the region. What might also be interesting with this too, um, is seeing what happens with these crystals. Because you could in theory just have guilds putting a bounty on these crystals, right? You go there to your guild and you say, hey, look, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for these power crystals. If we find them, we'll, we'll try and bring them back to you. And for every crystal we deliver, you pay us this much, right? So you just have this thing set up where you try and make sure. And if you see them uh, transporting a crystal, you'll help them out and stuff. But you could set up all these sort of mercenary contracts and everything with it too, to be able to help a guild maintain these open world objectives. There's so much stuff you can do with this. Yeah, you have to transport them to another zone. A lot of the time, you know, you have to take them to zones to get them to where you want to be. Over time, the energy level of a territory diminishes. So guilds will have to remain active to get maximum benefits from territories. It is also still possible to play a Crystal League matches from territory towers to supplement their energy level. To encourage capturing energy crystals and active play in the Outlands, we've rebalanced the impact of tower levels on season points. Territories now generate far fewer points if they are low on energy, but have a higher maximum potential than before if they are maintained at maximum level continuously. So again, just another mechanic in place to reward that active gameplay like you talked about, right? If you're just sat there, as is the current system, trying to hold as many territories as you can, you know, and just holding them like like Pokemon cards, right? To, to just sit there and try and pull out the win at the end. If you have a territory and you're not feeding it with power cores, it's not going to be worth shit. 
So there's no point fighting and diverting the efforts and the forces to hold it. So again, it forces these big, massive mega coalitions away from just dominating areas and holding everything that they can't actually support uh, and occupy outside of the CTA timers, right? Because the CTA timers come, they can fight for the territory, they can take it. But if they can't keep that actively fed with power cores, if they've got little ganking guilds around that are just murdering anybody trying to pick up these crystals and they can't divert the forces there during the day to be able to defend that and keep supplying it, it's not going to be worth it, which again, has the potential to open up outer ring territory control to, to smaller guilds and alliances, right? Because again, you just don't have the value from those territories if you're not maintaining the power crystal upkeep, um, which that, that will be super interesting to see how that comes along, honestly. With this change, we make season success less dependent on passive income and ensure guilds will have to remain active in the local area of their territory to maintain the energy level. Mm -hmm. Of course, players participating in this activity will also be rewarded with a significant amount of might and favor. In summary, the Conqueror's Challenge, Might Levels, and Energy Vortices allow players to push their guild towards victory with smaller scale activities while earning rewards for themselves and enjoying an all new type of open world PVP objective to boost their territories. We can't wait for you to be able to try all of these features in the Lands Awakened update. There's still plenty more to talk about before then, however, so join us again in the next Dev Talks when we discuss headquarters hideouts, power cores, the Looking new world modes, and many other changes coming to Albion Online in late November. Stay tuned. We will be doing. We will be doing. Honestly, great. Great changes.